Nifty and the Sensex open in the green on the last trading day of FY24 and not just that. Uh, zoom ahead, we have the banks, pharma stocks, all of them moving higher while auto, realty and some other stocks drag. The Bajaj twin surge over 2.5% as sources tell Money Control that Bajaj Housing Finance has initiated preliminary talks with several investment bankers for a potential IPO with a valuation of around 9 to around $10 billion. Dr. Reddy's rally is over 2% as it enters into a partnership with Sanofi Healthcare to promote and distribute its vaccine brands. The vaccine brands had combined sales of 426 crores last year. Shali Hotel surges after it launches a QIP. Sources tell CNBC TV team that the company is likely to raise up to 1,200 crore rupees. The issue price will be determined on the 2nd of April. VIP Industries rallies over 11% as it guides for double-digit revenue growth from the current quarter. Also at the analyst meet, the company said they will see market share gains starting from the first half of next year and margins improvement in the second half of next year. Hello and welcome to Chartbusters. I'm Rajal D'Souza. Joining me as always is Mangla Malu. Now, as you can see at the top of our heads, well, the large cap names are doing well. The Nifty, the Nifty Bank, both of them have breached the 20 DMA. However, the mid cap index is doing a relative underperformance today. Hey, Mangla. Hi, Nigel. The mid cap index is doing a relative underperformance at an index level, but yeah. individual stocks, Sorry. all of them are surging. We have nearly 1,700 stocks which are higher for just about 600 stocks which are lower. So the market breadth looks extremely strong. Looks like the market is set to be due to FY24 with a big bang itself. In the second half of trade, though, will be very important to see whether the mid-caps pick up some pace as well. And now, with the markets moving higher, whether it sustains going forward or not as well, given it is expiry today. We have uh, Sachi Dhanand Uttekar joining in for a quick technical check on the market. Sachi, yesterday was the Nifty Bank expiry. We did see a bit of a flourish towards the end of trade. Today is the Nifty expiry. The flourish has come in the first half of trade itself. Your thoughts on where we go from here? Do we sustain this and uh, what are the levels you're seeking? Uh, good morning, Mangalam. Mangalam, uh, clearly we have seen a very strong uh, you know, bullish move in the first half right now. And the cluster resistance is placed somewhere close to around 22,300, 22,350. So we don't expect uh, you know, market to you know really sustain at these levels. And probably we may see a, a, a slight bit of a correction and the expiry could shape up somewhere close to around 22,250, uh, 220 kind of a zone. So I think uh, the major part of the move for, for the day seems to be done. Probably uh, we may see a slightly uh, you know, uh, further push, but I, I think uh, uh, 22,340, 350 would be a good cluster wherein uh, some short positions can be considered. So we are expecting again a pullback uh, when it comes to Nifty. Okay, expecting a bit of a pullback on the Nifty. Great. Got that, Sachi. Sachi, what about individual stocks? What are you looking at? Uh, good morning, Nigel. Nigel, uh, here I think, uh, you know, it's better to keep a long short ratio. Uh, on long side, uh, clearly the way uh, Bajaj Finserv has, uh, you know, managed to sustain about that 1600 mark. Uh, you know, it was really struggling throughout this particular series, but now it is uh, displaying a very confident breakout. It looks like a classic uh, triangular formation on the daily scale, uh, uh, which is uh, indicating a price target uh, somewhere close to around 1660 to 1680. And that's why we are recommending, you know, building long positions here. Uh, keep a stop loss at 1605 on a decline up to 1620. The stock can be accumulated in your portfolio. The first target would be around 1660 followed by 1680. And on the short side, uh, I'm not really comfortable with the way Lupin has been behaving for the last three weeks. Uh, we have seen uh, signs of distribution here when it comes to its weekly starts. Uh, it has been trending below its five-week exponential moving average, and even the cluster support resistance uh, support base at around 1600 has been uh, breached. So probably we may see this particular stock uh, displaying a sizable correction here, and that's why we are recommending you know short positions here with a stop loss at 1610. Uh, the trading target could be placed somewhere close to around 1550. How far do you think the auto rally can sustain? I mean, we have a big move that we've seen on Maruti, which continues. Uh, Maruti, this month is up 11% now as we speak at the high point of trade. The other one is Aisha Motors, again, uh, among the top gainers on the index today. And most of the gains accruing just in the last 15, 20 odd minutes, currently at the high point. Uh, Sachi, so both uh, Aisha Motors and Maruti, do you have a sense of uh, the auto space? Is there a trade after this move that we've seen? 
Well, certainly yes for Maruti because uh, the way uh, we have seen this uh, bullish uh, flag breakout uh, near near to that 11,700 mark, you know, it is uh, displaying a pattern target of around uh, 13,700. So we, I am really confident about this particular move. So every decline would be a good opportunity in this particular counter. Uh, definitely, you know, the base has elevated uh, uh, quite substantially at around 12,200 now. So any pullback towards that, uh, you know, would be a good opportunity to accumulate the counter. We don't see any major distortion. Oopsie. All right. I think, Sachi, that uh, audio has got snapped out there. But we appreciate you joining in. We'll thank you on... I, I think, Sachi, you're back. Please go ahead. Yes. And when we look at uh, Aisha Motors, you know, the uh, uh, the performance has not been really significant. And that's why we believe that the stock is still stuck in that particular range uh, of 4,000 on the higher side. And uh, the base is somewhere close to around 3,700. So probably we may see uh, this oscillation uh, within Aisha Motors to continue. But when it comes to Maruti, I think it's a good classic, uh, you know, buy on declines candidate. The weekly monthly structure is still exhibiting a lot of confidence. Uh, wherein we are expecting a move towards 13,700. All right, take that point, Sachi. Thank you so much for joining in. Wish you a happy long weekend. Uh, have a good one next year. We uh, next financial year, that is, we will speak to you about the markets and the way forward as well. And then, before we take a short break, let's talk about uh, some ideas for profit coming in from our colleagues at Money Control Pro. Today, we have Lekha Badlani Jamnani. Yes, thanks. Uh, so we're seeing a good buying opportunity in Dhanuka, primarily driven by a supportive preliminary weather forecast, suggesting good rainfall during the upcoming monsoon season. Now, the global agrochemical market has not yet completely stabilized and remains a mixed bag. The specialty product segment is in a better shape, uh, while for certain generic products where uh, China's supply remains high, prices continue to remain under pressure. However, uh, even during a difficult market, Dhanuka has remained resilient throughout and posted a 9-10% volume growth in 9-month FI24 period, while the agrochemical industry on an average registered only a small single-digit volume growth. Now, Dhanuka has also commenced operations at its new plant in the hedge. However, given the market challenges, the contribution from this plant so far has been quite low compared to the earlier estimates uh, given by the management. Nonetheless, we think uh, the opportunities from this technical plant remains intact in terms of captive consumption, exports of technicals and contract manufacturing. And going forward, uh, this plant has huge potential to yield better margins for the company. Now, compared to the international markets, uh, the domestic agrochemical market remains uh, robust and pricing remains healthy for these specialty products. And Dhanuka expects to achieve a double-digit uh, revenue growth in FI25. The stock has fallen uh, over 10% in the last month and is trading at a PE of uh, 16 times FY25 projected earnings. We think any market weakness can be used to accumulate the stock. Right on that note, we'll take a short break. On the other side, we'll have the management of Technocraft Industries, Sharad Saraf, who's the chairman and managing director, joins in to discuss the company's business, out business outlook at large. Stay tuned for that conversation. Welcome back. You're watching us here on Chartbusters. As we speak, the mid-cap index too has moved into the green, just mildly so, but that's really not the concern. The broader markets are doing extremely well and so are the frontline indices. So let's get in the first management that we've lined up for you on the show. We have the management of Technocraft Industries. Remember, the company recently commissioned its uh, production at two new facilities catering to both the aluminum fabrication and the manufacturing of grey yarn as well. So to understand how this will aid their business, uh, what this does to the company's plans going forward. We have Sharad Saraf, who is the chairman and managing director at the company, joining in. Thanks a lot, Mr. Saraf, for joining in. Let's start with uh, the recent news flow that came by itself. Uh, you know, your uh, commencement of uh, production in your scaffoldings division, that will increase the capacity by about 600,000 square meters. And the other one, a uh, wholly owned uh, subsidiary, which has commenced production, of Grejian in Amravati. Both these units, uh, what do you expect their initial capacity to be, capacity ramp up, that is? And what could the addition to your revenues and margins be because of this? The Grejian uh, production in Amravati, uh, actually, that is a replacement. We have shut down the yarn mill in Murbad near Mumbai. Mm -hmm. 
because of uh, it being extremely expensive and we were continuously making losses there. So it's a kind of a re-engineering. So we put up a new state-of-the-art yarn mill in uh, Amravati, which is a part of cotton growing area in Vidarbha, Maharashtra. And uh, uh, because of the upgraded machinery, the state-of-art machinery, we expect uh, at least uh, 10 to 12 rupees a kilo cheaper yarn. And also there is a uh, advantage of uh, electricity costs there. There's a differential of about two and a half to three rupees per unit that would translate uh, to at least um, uh, 50 uh, lakh rupees a month of saving in electricity itself. So it's a it's a big saving. And uh, this is also our experience uh, from the first mill that we were operating in Amravati. So now we had 30,000 spindles there. So now we have 60,000 spindles. And earlier in Murbad, we had 60,000 spindles. So, so this is a kind of a replacement, but with profitability. Earlier so electricity... Is the only savings you said there was twelve rupees, uh, uh, you know, per unit rupees, of yes, twelve rupees for that technology difference. Okay, because so, we are uh, not having a how much does that account for in terms of overall savings? Overall saving would be at least 15, 16 rupees a kilo of yarn. And, and absolute terms, sir, like how you gave us that for electricity, you'll save around fifty lakhs per month. Yeah. Uh, because of this technology that you're talking about, how much will you save because of this? Another another 40-50 lakhs. So around a crore of savings? Saving, yeah, overall overall saving, overall uh, improvement in our bottom line could be 10 to 12 crores. 10 to 12 crores, got that, all right. Which at the, uh, moment, at the moment is a loss. So, you know, hmm. it's, uh, we will stop the loss and come to a profitable situation. Uh, lovely. So the yarn business will turn around then, and that's what you're trying to absolutely. tell us. Uh, yes, yes, okay. yes, yes, absolutely. Got it. Uh, let's focus on the larger part of your business then, the scaffoldings business. Tell yes. us what kind of so utilization. Now, now, coming to coming to scaffolding, what we are going to do in Amravati, uh, on, on Aurangabad, I'm sorry, is uh, produce form work, aluminium form work. So we plan to produce state of art aluminium form work, which is used in all the infrastructure projects, high rise buildings. And uh, wherever uh, very high quality uh, construction is required. So if you use aluminium form work, then uh, the finish is so good that you don't really have to do any uh, subsequent plastering or finishing work. You can straight away paint. And uh, mm. now these days you can see in many places in Mumbai where the construction are going on, the new uh, high-rise buildings are all having this uh, aluminium uh, <laughs> form work. So there is a very good demand uh, for this kind of uh, form work. So it's not really scaffolding. You see, there's a difference between scaffolding mm. and form work. Scaffolding is where the worker stands and works. Form work is um, uh, like a skin where you pour the concrete. So right. all the metro, for example, construction all over India, they use our form work. So, so how, how, how much does this plant uh, expect? I mean, how much are you expecting this plant to generate in terms of revenue? Initial in years, the capacity revenue, ramp up will be uh, yeah. slower, right? Yeah, in terms of revenue, anywhere between 800 to 1000 crores. Uh, probably 1000 is... crores, but I'm just uh, saying that in the, being the first year of operation, it could be 800 crores. So you're saying this expansion itself will contribute 800 to 1000 crores? Yeah, this is, a, this is a greenfield expansion completely. Got it. Because and as of now, with our existing uh, production. As of now, sir, your scaffolding business, if I look at the last quarter, it's contributing close to around 230 crores approximately, 230 to 50 crores on an average, on a quarterly yes. basis. Yes. So you're saying that the scaffolding business effectively, the potential of the revenue doubles? Correct. Because Got it. Two, things, two things are happening. One is yes. uh, this uh, form work is going to be made from aluminium, which is significantly, hmm. which is about uh, three, four times more expensive than steel. And uh, secondly, it's a more um, expensive product. So, you Got know, uh, our uh, top line would be very high. So, we have uh, addressed both the issues. One is the textile business turns profitable because of these changes. And the yeah. scaffolding business, the revenue is nearly du uh, doubles, the right. revenue potential. But on right. whatever base you deliver for FY24, what kind of a growth will you look at from the scaffolding business? And if you could tell us the rough areas of growth that you're looking at. Oh, scaffolding um, uh, business, yes. as I said, the top line will almost double. 
Right. Hmm. So that is the, the potential, bottom. right? That is the yes. potential. That's the potential. What can you deliver? What is yes. the what can in you the deliver? First year, first year will uh, increase it by at least seventy five percent. Seventy five percent. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's about all the equipment. All the equipment is there already, hmm. and uh, trial productions have started. So hmm. we expect to be full steam in production in uh, April itself. So, so have, this eight hundred yeah. to thousand crore that you're talking about. Uh, yeah. Is at full scale, at full capacity, right? Correct. At, at full capacity. So, so that one presumes could be towards the end of FY25, the first no, half no, of 25. No, 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 okay. no, 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 middle of uh, FY because end of FY. Okay. So this year itself, in FY25 itself, you can do about 800 crores, and thereafter 1,000 crore consistently crore. is Correct. what you can do. Correct. And Correct. Uh, how are the margins for this business? You said aluminium products are four to five times more expensive than all the other products that you are making. Yeah. But yeah, do you? Yeah. So earn four to five times more as well in this? Yeah, no, no, not four to five times, but at least we can expect about double margin. Uh, double. How much? Twice, twice of what we do now. So you okay. have two hundred crores now; it easy can easily become uh, four hundred crores. Okay. All right. Let's talk about the other part of your business. Then uh, the drum closure business that was affected due to lower demand. I understand. Uh, yes, has de- because ha- because we are suffering. Sir, so has demand has demand picked up, and what kind of no. a growth can you ex- estimate? No, 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 not yet. Demand no, has not picked. Up. No, got it. Because, because right. this is this is the effect of the war. Unless the Ukraine, uh, Euro, Russia war stops and uh, Europe starts picking up, mm. uh, it's very difficult because Europe was a very big uh, market for us. For as a consolidated entity, mm. what kind of a revenue growth should we look at for the company and the whole, sir? And also, what kind of a rough margin band we should be looking at because of the cost saving in textile, better margins in this aluminium business, as well as the drum closure business, which is still struggling. You see, uh, with the present uh, geopolitical fluid situation, it's very difficult to uh, predict anything uh, very accurately. Well, all we can do is assuming status quo. Now, see, for example, hmm. this Red Sea, this Red Sea thing which has happened now is eroding our right. problem. Now, supposing something like that happens again somewhere else in the world, we will have a problem again. So, you know, uh, it's very difficult to, to predict predict that way. But we expect to add at least um, 1,000 crores of top line because even in uh, yarn, uh, there is a little bit of improvement in the market. The prices are a little bit improving. So, uh, we can expect 1,000 crores additional revenue if assuming everything remains as on date now, and uh, we can expect our uh, bottom line to almost double. All right. So bottom line uh, looks like around 500 crores uh, by FY25, assuming that you do 250 crores in FY24, mm-hmm. and uh, close to around 3,000 crores on the top line. All these points are well taken. Finally, before we let you go, Mr. Saraf, if you could give us a sense of the update on the demerger of the textile business. I remember you had said that you were considering restructuring there. Now, with this yarn business turning profitable, prospects of higher value unlocking post demerger increase, right? Could, What's the timeline for that? Yes, it could happen. And in fact, uh, we were delaying because of this only. Because we wanted to make it profitable and then look at uh, demerging it. We are open for demerger. And uh, if we have a good opportunity, we will. But uh, it is not going to be a distress sale. It's not, good, it's not something that uh, we would just like to get rid of at any cost. No. But you can that separate it at least. It's going to be profitable anyway. Mrs. Sarah, but you can separate it at least. No? That could unlock value according to you? Not really. Because if someone wants to invest in the scaffolding business, which has great potential, then they can invest there. If someone no. wants to invest in the textile business, which is turning around, then they can invest there. Do you see that rational for the time being, you want to keep the businesses together? No, at the moment, we want to keep the businesses together until we see some uh, good uh, valuation or some good uh, prospects. So basically, by prospects, you mean you are looking to sell this business as soon as uh, you get good price, right? Well, uh, that way everything is sellable in the in the in life or in the world. <laughs> no, no. I mean, you are saying you are looking at prospects moment, and not open no, to the demerger. Moment, there is no, uh, yeah. At the moment, uh, there is no such plan. There is no such plan. But if you get a good, good enough big check and they say, Mr. Saraf, this is what I want to pay you, <laughs> and it matches your expectation, then you'll say yes. you are a ready seller. Could happen. Can happen. Okay. We'll discuss it internally. We'll discuss it internally. 
Because After you'll do that, we'll, we'll invite you back on the show, sir. Uh, once you do that internally, we'll be happy to have you on the show. But we appreciate you joining in. Thanks so much for stopping in here and Thank speaking you. to us here Thank on CNBC TV 18. For the time being, we slip into that short break. Come back, continue to focus on markets. Welcome back. Well, the markets are doing very, very well. So let's focus on a couple of stocks as well. Charlie Hotels, well, that's surging in trade after it launched a QIP. Vamakshi joins us to fill us in with more details. Vamakshi. Well, absolutely. Charlie Hotels in focus today. And that is because uh, the company, like you rightly pointed out, has launched a QIP. Now, sources tell us that the QIP uh, could be uh, looking at almost 1,200 crores. The base deal is worth 1,000 crores, so with an option to upsize up to 1,200 crores. Now, this is what sources are telling us. Now, keep in mind that the company earlier had obtained an enabling resolution to raise up to almost 2,000 crores. In fact, in the third con call as well, the company had indicated that they would like to keep gunpowder ready to pursue inorganic growth opportunities. Now, as far as this QIP is concerned, as per the SEBI formula, the QIP floor price is at 780.76 rupees per share. When we compare this floor price to the closing price yesterday, it is coming in at a discount of almost 10%. The issue price, however, will be determined on April 2nd, depending on the demand this QIP receives. But on the back of this QIP launch, Shali Hotels is searching in trade today. Thanks a lot, Mamakshi, for that. With the kind of uh, move that we've seen on the hospitality space, uh, could be a strong demand for this and uh, the stock still holding up with gains uh, though off the highs. Uh, let's get you some excerpts now coming in from veteran emerging market investor Mark Mobius. His conversation with CNBC's Wilfred Frost on why policy continuity is positive for investors in the areas in which in the Indian market he is bullish on. Let's hear out the veteran man. Definitely. I think he'll even strengthen his position in the political landscape. And that's a good thing for, for investors in the economy? I think it'll be a very good thing, because basically what Modi has done is digitize the uh, Indian economy. He, he's moving in the direction of more and more technology. And it's amazing. Some of the things they've done, for example, the central bank in digital currency and that sort of thing, has really moved ahead of many of the developed countries. So uh, you've got a situation with a very young population, very dynamic uh, population, Many, many differences. I like to call it the United States of India because the different states are so different from each other. But a rich cultural heritage and uh, just very exciting times for the country. Is it all about uh, the consumers? Because, as you said, it's a young population. It's a, a growing working age population. Or are there tech names, are other sectors that you're attracted to? It's consumers, but more importantly, it's the tech area. As you know, up to now, India has been a leader in software technology. They export software all around the world. Now they're getting into hardware. And I think that's going to be most exciting. Right then, with that, uh, it's a wrap on this edition of Chartbusters. Thank you so much for watching. From Nigel and me, the entire team, Team of Trading Art comes up next. Thank you for watching.